Hi, my name is Nick Robinson and I've been living here in the Algarve for 21 years. Moved over in the year 2000 and uh, only supposed to come for six months and ended up staying for the rest of my life. <laughs> so there's a bit of a testament to how much I enjoy it. So what I'm doing here with this channel of, um, and so welcome to my channel if you've never seen this before, I am basically making videos all about the Algarve and the whole idea is to try and show you what life is really like here because you know we get a lot of tourism videos and um, you know all the, all the tourism board do a great job but you know they, they generally show the pretty side of life so what I'm trying to show is the reality and you know what the reality is not all that bad so today we're gonna head all the way over to the west coast um, which is quite a ways and I'm gonna tell you all about the beaches in the west coast and then we're going to follow that up with a video you know a little bit later maybe in a couple of weeks time about all the towns in the Algarve sorry towns in the west coast where to live what to do okay let's look at the Algarve so now generally the Algarve is what I would call a rectangle okay so it starts there's the west coast there's the northern border and then there's the Guadiana River, and then there's the southern coast. Okay, now on the southern coast we've split into Western Algarve and Eastern Algarve. Okay, so West and East of Faro. So Faro is not exactly the center, but you know, the center is probably Albufeira, but we'll generally refer, I'll generally refer to the center of the Algarve as sort of this area around Lule. Now, on the west coast, which is where we're going to focus today, we have some wild and amazing conditions. The main town close to the west coast, or main towns, are basically from the border with Alentejo, Odesech, Algezur, Bodeira, Vilde de Bishpu, and Sagres. Okay, now we'll talk about those guys uh, in more detail in later videos. But what we're going to do today is we're going to focus on the beaches of the west coast. Let's look at the beaches of the Western Algarve. West coast, here we go. So we're starting in the north, Odesej Beach. We're going to come in from the north and go head down south. Okay, so now this Odesej Beach is the border of the Alentejo and the Algarve. Now, those are obviously two provinces. The Algarve is the southern strip all the way across Portugal. And then the Alentejo is the biggest province just to the north. And it's not called a province in Portuguese. It's called Distrito, but anyway. So the Sage Beach is beautifully unique. I mean, if you look at this river coming down um, and it just comes out straight in, so that you get a beautiful little beach on this side, which is calm and almost lagoon-like. And then you get a, the proper beach on this side, which is perfect with, you know, great waves for surfing. I mean, amazing breaks for surfing. Now, if you head along a little further south down the coast, right over here, there's a place called Adegas Beach. Now that is a nude beach. So you can strip off all your clothes there without any, and it's actually an official nude beach. It's not like one of these unofficial nude beaches. So you won't have to worry about upsetting anybody there. Um, it's actually one of five beaches in Portugal that are officially licensed as a nude beach. And I got that information from the uh, Naturist Association website. So these guys know their oats. Now, let's head a little bit further south. Now look, there's 34 beaches along this coastline. We're only going to deal with the top 11 beaches um, because they have, all of these beaches that I'm mentioning now have lifeguards in the summer season or what we call the Epoca da Balneario. So during the summer season they will be protected but obviously during winter and all the other beaches they're not protected so you take your life in your own hands and this can get pretty ferocious this ocean here on the west coast. It's much calmer in the south coast here on the west coast. It's pretty hectic. Okay so let's head a little bit further down because there's just rocks 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 all the way down until 
we get it way down to Praia do, do Val dos Homens. Okay, and then a little bit further on, there is Praia do da Amoreira. Now, Praia da Amoreira is pretty close to Algezur, um, which you can see is just in the background over here, over these cliffs, over these hills. So it's very centrally located. And also, again, it's got a lovely little lake, a lovely little river running down. And you can so you can actually bathe in the lagoon over there at high tide generally. At low tide, it's not as big. Um, but it's a lovely beach, this. And it's also a great surfing beach. Um, as I said, lifeguards, etc. There's a snack bar here and restaurants and things around there. So Monte Clerigo is just a little bit further south. And again, another lovely beach. What, what else can I say about it? I mean, this, the West Coast is amazing. This is where I head to if I ever have to go surfing during the summer. Um, but the problem is that it's quite far away from where I live. I mean, it's a, you know, I'll, I'll tell you exactly how many kilometers it is in a bit. I'll stick it on the bottom here. But it's about 150 kilometers. So, you know, there and back, 300 kilometers. I mean, I might as well go to Lisbon. Anyway. Okay, so now we're going to get to the jewel of beaches in the Western Algarve. For me, this bay of Varifana is the best. So let's stop here and have a little interlude when Holly and um, Tom went for a surf. Actually, Holly went for a surf and Tom filmed it. But now, just a little word about Tom. Tom's a guy who's working for me. He's walked over from England. His girlfriend, Holly, works for the APP World Tour, which is a stand-up paddling world tour. Um, they're based up in Ericeira, so she's, she, it's good for her to be in Portugal. And they're just helping me out. It's really fun to work with them. And they went down to check out Arifana. Hola. Hola. <laughs> Arifana is famous for its surfing, so I think we've been before um, and the, the waves are perfect there, they're amazing. And, and the waves are very good at Arifana because it's a very sheltered bay, so it gets very, very busy. So that's why we're up early to try and beat the crowd. Not at all. So, Arifana is a small village on the west coast of the Algarve. Uh, it's about the nearest big town is probably Sagres, which is about a 45 minute drive away. Arifana is surrounded by tiny little villages, um, but it's most famous for Praia de Arifana, which is the beach there. So Holly, you did a bit of a surf there. What was it that you liked about Arifana Beach? There's not much you can't like about it, really. Mm. The waves are incredibly consistent because it's so sheltered and we've surfed Whilst we've had our higher car, we've served quite a lot of spots on the West Coast. And Arifana is by far the most clean waves, the best wind, and yeah, really consistent. And they're not massive either. Well, we chose the days to go where they weren't too big, but you know, it's not inaccessible to beginners. You can pick days that are smaller and it's quite consistently one to two meters um, big. So perfect, perfect for me. I'm gonna say it's a bit of, it's for all sort of ability classes really, isn't it? Yeah, from beginner to, Probably not professional, but advanced. You're a beginner intermediate, you're intermediate now. Yeah. And what would you, what's your preferred height for a wave? I'd say, yeah, one, one metre would be 
pretty ideal, but I could probably go up to 1.5 metres. But mm. any, any bigger than that, I'd probably be a little bit intimidated. So obviously you've got Arifana Beach and then up the hill above that, it's a really steep hill, but then you've got Arifana, the town mm -hmm. itself. So what do you like about the town of Arifana? It has a pretty cool surf culture about it. It's all about, it's surf centric. It's got loads of surf schools, it's got surf cafes, and there's a lot of people knocking around in some pretty nice vans. I, mm. I don't know if you remember that. People drinking coffee out of the back of the vans. Yeah, it's got a very lively surf culture. And other than that, it's pretty remote. So if you're going somewhere to expect more of a, you know, a nightlife scene maybe, or just even a big town with lots of people, don't expect that because it's like anywhere really on the West Coast and it's a very relaxed atmosphere there. So we, we enjoyed it. Yeah, I'd say unless you do a water sport, like surfing, bodyboarding, stand up paddle surfing, I probably wouldn't go. Mm. I think there's quite a lot of walkers there, so that's another thing you can do. But yeah, I'd say it's surf centric, yeah. Mm. Are there any negatives to our farmer? Yes, definitely. It's a very busy place to go surfing because it's so good and so consistent and accessible to all levels. The lineup is very busy. If you're a very confident surfer and you don't mind getting out there, pushing pushing yourself, not minding like whoever else is in the lineup, go for it. But I can be a little bit more conservative when it comes to surfing. I get scared I'm gonna drop in on someone. So yeah, if you're confident, I'd go. It's better on the weekdays because the weekends are pretty crazy. We've been on mm. both and the weekends were so busy. Um, and early mornings are obviously better because there are less people out. So you just mm. kind of want to avoid really busy times. Mm. And another part I didn't, don't really like about it is that it's quite remote and it, that makes it inaccessible. But if you are a beginner, a lot of surf schools take you from Lagos or towns around to Arafana. So after you had your surf, what did we do then? We went to a cafe. We had a lovely little breakfast date. Mm, we did, we didn't we? We had some coffee and some breakfast. And that was called C-U, spelled S-E-A. So a bit Brilliant. of a pun there, a lovely little pun. Um, and yeah, it was a really nice cafe. I got the breakfast burrito, so that was called the Burrito Del Gezer. And it was very nice. It was black beans and chorizo, a bit of hummus. It was a bit of a weird melee. This is a Burrito Del Gezer. And Holly, what have you had? Toast with... And peach jam. Peach mm. jam, lovely. Jam on toast, very British. Um, but was that nice? It was lovely, yeah. It's mm. my favourite post serve snack. Mm. It's a very nice restaurant. The staff were really nice to us as well. Is it too early? Like we say, the only problem with Arafana is that the, the sea is very busy. And then once everybody's finished up surfing, they all go to the cafes. And See You is the first cafe on the way up the hill. So it does get quite busy. But if you get there, get in before the crowd, get to the restaurant, get your table. It's, it's lovely. Um, and yeah. highly recommended. Okay, well, I hope you enjoyed that little surf and interlude with Holly and Tom. Now, let's head a little bit further south from Arifana to Praia de Bodeira. Okay, Praia de Bodeira. And I always used to call this Carapetera. But now, the beach is called Bodeira and the town is called Carapetera. So, it's a little bit confusing. Um, or it was confusing for me, at least. But uh, you can see just around the other side of this headland is Praia do Amado. And also a great surfing beach. Okay, so... You know, all the way along, there's their breaks all the way along here. Some are more accessible than others. And I think that's the main problem with these beaches um, is the accessibility and how many roads go down. Because we don't have like a big tired road marginal going all the way down the western coast, which is lovely because that, you know, that sort of keeps it more natural. Okay, let's head further south. Praia da Corduama. And you can see other little beaches as we're going over. I'm just I'm just focusing on the top 11. Otherwise, we'd be here all day with 34 beaches. So Corduama. Um, great. I love Cordoba as well. Um, there's actually some nice hidden little beaches along here. And I think there's one area around here. It might be here or Castellosio, the next one. We have to walk over and, uh, and you can actually have, um, what are they called? Like a ropes letting you down into this real secret little beach. Yes, this is, I'm sure it's over here. I don't know. I'll find out. I went there once with uh, this really cool guy called Toby One. <laughs> who's started surf tourism in Portugal. So he's the man to blame. <laughs> okay, I actually interviewed him on my podcast as well. So you can check that out. I'll leave a link in the description. Whoops, 
in the description. See, I'm becoming a proper YouTuber. I've got to do that. <laughs> All right, Praia Ponta Ruiva. This is another beach. These aren't officially, these, these last two beaches are not a part of the 11, which are, um, are lifeguarded during the summer. So you're on your own here. It's a little bit more difficult to get down, as you can see this dirt track coming in. Okay, and heading over to Praia de Talheiro, Praia do Talheiro actually, I misspelled. Now this beach is actually one of the most incredible geological sites around the Algarve. So if you are into your geology, get stuck in here and you'll be able to see incredible things, incredible things. Um, I'm not a geologist, but I really do enjoy a bit of geology. It's interesting to see how it goes. So this, just to zoom out a little bit, what I can show you here is that this is Sagres, it's the southwestern tip of Europe, and it's also known as the end of the world. Now, when we zoom out here, you can see all these beaches. This is the west coast of the Algarve. This is also known as the Costa Vicentina. And within the Costa Vicentina is an incredible walking trail or hiking trail called the Rota Vicentina. And my uncle and aunt, they have been uh, doing quite a bit of hiking over there. And one thing they came back with is be prepared for a lot of sandy trails because, um, you know, it's quite hard going, but it's also stunningly beautiful. I mean, you can walk across, walk, you'll walk basically a coastal walk all the way up to Lisbon if you want to. So there's a proper 300 kilometers section, but um, check it out at the rotavicentina.com. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you'll go and visit the West Coast when you get down here. I'm not suggesting you go and live out there. We can talk about that in the next video um, or another a future video when I discuss Algezur and Monchique and a couple of other little towns around there, whether they're suitable for actually living there or not. You know, it's a little bit different, but it's definitely an amazing place to visit. So enjoy your beach hunting. Go to www.algarvealex.com if you want help relocating to the Algarve. Or Portugal. Thanks a lot. See you next week.